Hi everyone, it's Halo 4 Tutor with another Halo 4 gameplay commentary. As always, you know you're going to get my signature tips and tricks to help you start winning more often and having a lot more fun while you're doing it. I have a really solid game this time around. It's from the map Exile, and uh, it's a big team game. I end up uh, with 27 kills and only 6 deaths, so it's a very strong performance. My good friend Unbiased Stone was playing with me. He had 32 kills and 10 deaths. So between the two of us, we scored 59 of our team's 100 points. So two-thirds of the points scored by our team were scored by Unbiased Stone and I. So that's an eight players on our team, but two of us scored two-thirds of the points. So we really had a strong game. And I'm just going to do a little more casual commentary this time around. Just kind of walk you through what I was thinking, what I was doing and just give you some of my thoughts and impressions along the way. Right off the bat, first thing I do is I go for the Scorpion tank uh, because this is just the most powerful vehicle in, in the map. You know, you can it shoots at a tremendous range. You can get a lot of multi-kills and killing streaks. Unfortunately, the Banshee gets up nice and close and we ha kind of mutually kill one another. Um, but I, I was able to get a few kills with it and equally as important, uh, of course, we kept it out of the enemy hands that's very important as well. Now the other powerful vehicle on this map is the Gauss Warthog, or the Gauss Hog. And uh, I'm not really sure why, but the blue team is really not using it. They have it parked over at their uh, base, and it takes them several minutes to get it into action. That's a really big mistake, people. You really want to hop in those power vehicles and start using them as soon as possible. Now, especially now that the Scorpion tank is down, that Gauss turret is more powerful than ever. And so it's a big mistake for them not to be using it. Um, the one thing I will say that I've noticed about Halo 4 is that the, the armor on the vehicles in general seems much weaker than it used to be. It used to take a whole lot of team shooting to uh, take down like a Banshee or a Warthog. But these days, with the new weapons and the new system, it seems like you can take down vehicles much, much more quickly. So if there's a pesky uh, Banshee or a Warthog on the other team, just start team shooting it with your DMR, your battle rifle, your assault rifle, your sniper rifle, whatever it is. These are all very effective weapons against vehicles, and, and these weapons will bring vehicles down very, very quickly. Here I was very frustrated with my uh, driver because he tipped us over twice in like a 30 second period. If you're driving a vehicle, people, you have to, your number one goal is to not tip over, okay? That's like your number one goal. Uh, let me just give you, while I'm at it, I'll just give you a couple tips for driving. Uh, I know I'm not driving right now, but if you're driving, number one, you don't want to get too close to your opponents, okay? Because if you get too close, you're going to get hit with a rocket or a sticky grenade or a plasma blast or, you know, something bad is going to happen to you. You're going to get hijacked. So don't get too close to your opponent to where they can take you down very quickly and easily. Keep your distance because most of the weapons on the vehicles are, are powerful at very long ranges. You don't need to get up and close. Rule number two, don't tip over. I've already kind of brushed on that, right? Your number one goal is to stay upright, okay? Watch where you're driving. Don't run into things or don't run over things that are going to tip you over or so forth, okay? you got to play smart. Uh, let, let me identify, uh, you know, I, I got the ordinance up here and you'll see that I'm not using it right away. The reason being is that just because you have an ordinance available doesn't mean you should just throw it out there uh, as soon as it becomes available. A lot of times you want to save it for a uh, strategically beneficial time during the game. Now, uh, normally this would actually be a pretty good time, but what's really happening is I'm waiting for the, the, the scorpion tank to respawn because it's going to respawn here in about 10 seconds or so. And I didn't want to grab a Spartan laser, then jump into the tank, because as soon as I die, I would have lost the ordnance, I would have lost that Spartan laser, so I'm going to kind of wait for my next respawn to use it. Now what you could do alternatively, you see my good friend Matt is right here next to me. If I hadn't have actually been in the tank, uh, I could have dropped the ordnance and allowed him to grab the Spartan laser or something like that. So that's another way that you can use the ordinances but just don't throw them down as soon as you earn them you know take your time to find a strategically beneficial moment in the game to use your ordinance and one other thing that I've noticed about um, ordinances is that if you call ordinances indoors 
it just kind of materialized right in front of you, right? Whereas if you um, look at all those medals there, I get like an overkill, double kill, triple kill, kill from the grave, destroy the vehicle. I think I got a wingman or something. I got like, I got like 10, uh, I got like 10 medals all at the same time there. And so that's why you got to go for those power vehicles. So you, you can see that when the ordinances uh, spawn indoors, they just kind of materialize. But outdoors, they like drop down from the sky and it's very obvious that they're coming. And so if at all possible, I actually do recommend that you uh, drop your ordinances indoors or at least undercover. Because it's not quite as obvious. It's not like a giveaway for your location, right? Sometimes if there's a sniper on the other side or just uh, opponents in general, they might be looking for you. And uh, they might be able to find you much more easily through that very conspicuous ordnance drop. So if you can go indoors on a big team game, you might save yourself a uh, death or two from getting sniped in the head. And especially if people see that very notorious ordnance drop, they might come chasing after you to try to take that power up that you just dropped down. Okay, So you want to be uh, a little discreet about those ordnances if it's possible. Now, the laser here, this is uh, obviously a great weapon. I'm going to get, I think, a double kill right here with the on the Warthog. And um, very important to take down that Gauss Hog. So I was, I was kind of lucky he didn't hit me there. But you, you do need to keep an eye on the opponent's vehicles and make sure to keep them at bay. Now, one of the things that I do throughout this game, uh, you'll see that I'm, I'm continuing to maneuver around the map and staying indoors for the most part or at least kind of using the tunnels on the periphery of the map. Um, this is something that's very important, uh, especially on big team games. You don't want to go running out in the open. You, you want to stay in the, the tunnels and the caves. They've done a really good job, actually, of you know, developing a lot of areas on the maps that uh, you know, allow you to maneuver in some cover, right? And so you want to stay through those tunnels, stay in the caves, that's what I'm doing here. I'm able to kind of pick up a lot of uh, simple and easy kills. And I really am in no danger, you know, back here. But I'm still able to get a lot of kills. And this is the kind of gameplay that's going to help you get those really high kill death spreads and those really strong ratios, right? I had like four and a half times as many kills as I did deaths. You're going to do that by playing smart. Just because you played defensively doesn't mean you don't have opportunities to score points. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the game, Stone and I uh, scored 60 of our team's points, okay? And we do that by playing a balanced game, by playing both an offensive and defensive strategy. And by playing smart, you know, I'm timing the tank here. I know it's going to come back about every three or four minutes. And so uh, I, I haven't been able to go on any really huge streaks with the tank. But I keep coming back to it, and by the end of the game, I end up with, uh, you know, I think 19 tank kills, right? Because you just, you have to time those vehicles, go out, and grab them, okay? Because it really provides a tremendous advantage over your opponents. Now, I, I do have a, a, a ton of requests, and I appreciate all the requests coming in. I do my very best to, um, you know, create videos based on the requests that I get. Um, I, I want to mention one thing. I get a ton of requests for flood or infection game types. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you all now, I really dislike flood. Always have, always will. I don't play infection. I don't like infection. Uh, it's not my game type. Not, not the way I play. And so, you know, <laughs> I hate to disappoint you all, but I'm not going to be posting any flood tips or tricks. Hey, you're on your own there. Uh, but frankly, I don't think that you need a ton of tips and tricks for the Flood uh, because I, I think it's kind of a mindless gameplay. <laughs> There's some strategy to it, to be sure. I, I shouldn't talk so much trash about it just because I don't like it. doesn't mean it's a bad game type, but uh, all I'm saying is I'm not going to be posting any tips for it. You guys are on your own. The cool thing about this binary rifle, and this is the, this is the um, Promethean Sniper. Um, you know, it, it, uh, it only is, uh, it has that scope when you zoom in, right? When you're zoomed out, it has this huge scope, so you really can't no scope with it. But when it's zoomed in and you have that scope, it's actually a one-shot kill to the body. So if you just clip your opponents in the toe with this binary rifle, that's a one-shot kill. So I'm not sure if any of you have used this weapon yet, 
But if you have an opportunity to pick it up, it's a really a fantastic weapon. It's, it's in my opinion, the most effective sniper in the game because it's just a one-shot kill anywhere in the body. Especially if you guys struggle with accuracy, you may want to try choosing the binary rifle as a loadout. Not as a loadout, I'm sorry, as an ordinance, right? If you have the opportunity in an ordinance. I do have one other announcement that I really want to touch base on before the video wraps up here. Um, is I get a lot of requests for the campaign. I did the entire campaign on Legendary Solo in Reach. Uh, I put up, in my opinion, some, some good videos. Uh, there's other people, though, that are much, much better at the campaign than I am. And um, I want you guys to have the tips and tricks that you're looking for for the Legendary campaign because a lot of the, I know, the, a lot of the achievements are based on the campaign. And so what I've done is I've actually partnered up with a good friend of mine. His name is RC Master, and he's from Great Britain, and he does these amazing, like he's legendary. He holds like world records for the, the Halo campaigns. He is, he's the best that there is, and I'm not just saying that. He is literally like the world record holder for a lot of the campaign missions. And uh, he has very, very generously agreed to allow me to post his legendary solo campaign walkthroughs for Halo 4 onto my channel. He's posting them on his channel as well, so you can watch them in either location. You can watch them on my channel or on his channel. And so I'm going to be posting those as he puts them out. He's already gone through, I believe, the first two missions, and he's probably going to be going through uh, more very soon. And as he, as he creates them, I'm going to post them on my channel. The reason I'm doing this is he is just legendary. He's so much better at the campaign than I am. And I could do a, a campaign walkthrough guide for you, but it just wouldn't be as good. So if you're interested in doing the campaign on Legendary, make sure to stay tuned for RC Masters videos on my channel. Anyway, thanks. thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the commentary. Hope you learned a few things. Uh, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, we'll reach Tudor signing out. I'll see you next time.